As shown on this introductory screen, this will be a review, compare and contrast for organic chemistry covered in chapters 22 and 23 of our text. We're going to get started here with alcohols, aldehydes, and ketones. And what you're seeing here is that they all have something in common. And that is that they all have oxygens on them. So they become like a ketone, like a um, alkane, alkene or alkyne, but they're going to have an oxygen on them, and these oxygens will be in different ways. For instance, if we take a close look here at alcohol, alcohol is always going to have an OH group which we used to call hydroxide but because this is not an ion this is called a hydroxyl group H-Y-D-R-O-X-Y-L group and that hydroxyl group defines any hydrocarbon that has it on it as an alcohol. Now another one well, aldehydes and ketones also have alcohols, but in this case, the alcohols are always double bonded to a carbon. Now, this little group here is called a carbonyl group. Now, a carbonyl group is just the carbon and the oxygen that's double bonded to it. You'll notice that ketones also have a carbonyl group. And that carbonyl group is going to be uh, in different places depending on whether we have an aldehyde or a ketone. So, we'll start with looking at what makes the aldehyde an aldehyde and that is the carbonyl group is going to be on the very end carbon so an end carbon with a double bonded oxygen on it is going to represent or will become an aldehyde and one of the things that you'll also see with an aldehyde is a hydrogen on that carbon of the carbonyl group. Now since this is at the end of a carbon chain there's also going to be that end carbon will be hooked to another carbon. And so we have a minimum of two carbons here and you're going to see a hydrogen and a carbon hooked to this carbon right here. And so what we have is one, two, three four bonds. One to a hydrogen, two to the oxygen in the carbonyl group, and then <clears throat> we've got a carbon that could be hooked to no other carbons, or it might be hooked to as many as five or ten. So any of those would be considered an aldehyde. And when we come up to name it, this guy is always going to be number one, because the carbonyl group de determines where the number one carbon will be. And all of these guys will have names that will end with a A L ending. Now alcohols are easily easily confused because their names always end with OL not AL they sound a lot alike and you can get those two mixed up really easily and a lot of students do so be careful of that now how does this carbonyl group look different when we have a ketone well, a ketone, this carbon of the carbonyl group is going to be hooked to two other carbons. And now to be a ketone, 
these two carbons make the carbonyl group in the middle and you'll notice that the carbon cannot have a hydrogen on it because it already has four bonds one to the carbon above the, in, in the structure one to the carbon below and then we have a double bonded O here so that's a total of four bonds on that carbon which is what it needs and so if you think of aldehydes as the carbonyl groups always on the end and ketones the carbonyl group is always not going to be on an end it's going to be hooked to at least two different carbons then you know how to tell a ketone from an aldehyde now when we name these guys they're going to have a different ending altogether and all of these guys will have names end with O-N-E and we pronounce that own not one but own and so let's look at the name for this particular structure right here as it sits we'd have a three carbon chain which would normally be a propane if we're talking about alkanes but because this is a ketone it's going to be a number two see the two is because our chain is three long and the carbonyl group is the number two carbon so this would be two propanone that's two propanone p r o p a n o n e now how do we get that we take the e off of the alkane name which would be propane just remove the e and then add your o n e now if we were naming this aldehyde this would be an ethanol there's no number with it because this guy is always number one so we don't need to say that it's on number one if it's an aldehyde it's on number one automatically know that so this would be ethanol if there was another carbon on here if there were three carbons we would call it propanol if there were four carbons we'd call it butanol and that is the way we can always be able to tell alcohols and aldehydes, aldehydes and ketones apart the ways in which they're similar and the ways in which they're different and that's it for this piece of video we're going to do a couple other little ones that will go along with this